Good afternoon, everyone. So, we are now done with our prelim topics from chapter 1 to chapter 3. Now, we proceed with chapter 4 on developing a competitive strategy and the contemporary cost management techniques. To start, we will have the following discussion points. First, we will discuss the strategic measures of success, the basic competitive strategies, and the various contemporary cost management techniques. There are 14 techniques now that we will be discussing in a bit. As you can remember, strategy is a set of policies, procedures, and approaches to business that produce long-term success. Strategy specifies how an organization matches its own capabilities with the opportunities in the marketplace to accomplish its objectives. And companies follow one of the two broad strategies. Okay. And who is the one responsible in deciding what kind of strategy will the company be employing? So this is the work of the management accountants. No? So they work closely with managers in formulating strategy by providing information about the sources of competitive advantage. For example, the cost productivity or efficiency advantage of their company relative to competitors or the premium prices a company can charge relative to the cost of adding features that make its products or services distinctive as a management accountant they help strategy they help formulate the strategy by answering the following guide questions as it should be is there over capacity Nawala yung overcapacity, but it's another question. Next would be on the various strategic measures of success. Now, so firms use cost management to support their strategic goals. And these strategic cost management system develops strategic information, including both financial and non-financial information. So the following are the financial performance measures. We have growth in sales and earnings, the cash flows, as well as the stock price. They show the impact of the firm's policies and procedures in the firm's current financial position and therefore its current return to the shareholders. On the other hand, we have non-financial measures of operation which include, among others, market share, product quality, customer satisfaction, and growth opportunities. These non-financial factors show how the firm show the firm's current and potential competitive position as measured in from three or that are measured from three additional perspective, namely the customer, the internal business process, and innovation and learning. These strategic measures of success, the financial and non-financial measures, comprises the balance scorecard. No? So the critical success factors, which are also commonly referred to as the strategic financial and non-financial measures of success, are as follows. So it has already been identified and you need to know how to measure these critical success factors in order to facilitate the monitoring and evaluation of the operation. So under financial measures of success, we have sales, profitability, liquidity, and market value. Under the sales, for sales, we can measure sales by the level of sales in critical product groups, sales trend, 
the percent of sales from new products in the sales forecast accuracy. On the other hand, we have profitability wherein we can measure it from the operations or from the earnings from operations, our earnings trend, and our dividend growth over time. The next one would be on the liquidity wherein we can measure it through cash flow, its trend, the interest coverage, asset inventory turnover, uh, no, asset turnover and inventory turnover. We also have receivables turnover and credit ratings. And finally, on the market value is measured through its share price. Next item would be on the non-financial measures, which comprises of the following. Customer satisfaction, dealer and distributor, marketing and selling, timeliness and quality. Under customer satisfaction class, you need to consider the customer returns and complaints and you can have it through a customer survey. So you will be compiling all the feedbacks from your customer to know what are the aspects in the operations or from the delivery for the delivery of service that uh, they would want you to improve on. For dealer and distributor, we can measure it through the coverage and strength of dealer and distributor channel relationship. Uh, just in case you have a number of dealers per state or region. So it could be that uh, for region 10, uh, you only have like four distributor or five distributor. It would really depend on your um, operation, no? if that is a fast moving item or not. It will depend on the strategy also. On your um, distribution cha strategy or channels. For marketing and selling, you can measure it through the trends in sales performance, through number of trainings, number of hours dedicated for trainings, uh, market research activities, and it can be measured in hours or in peso value. For timeliness, uh, you can measure your success factor through an on-time delivery performance or uh, time from order to customer receipt. As you know, um, we really would want to receive our items in a timely manner no? because we are looking into the lead time. We plan ahead of time to know uh, kailan kaya to ma-receive. No? So, we take into consideration the lead time and where would this item come from would it be coming from abroad or just local so if it is near to our residence so it must be delivered earlier than that but sometimes uh you know may i think there there are already businesses that has like yung drop shipping na tinatawa so parang if even if you order from abroad they already have you know inventory items in the various regions so, under quality, you have customer complaints and warranty expense. So, if in case you provide warranty for the products you delivered, depende if um, mataas ba yung parang availment nila sa warranty or meron ka bang kinakailang i-check bago mo, uh, you know, the quality that you are providing, the quality of the product that you are providing, baka naman, Bili ka na, nagbi, nagbibigay ka na sa kanila ng maraming product na the same product but, but uh, hindi pa din maganda yung quality. So, you will really suffer yung parang reputational, reputational risk, may risk doon. And, of course, um, yung ibang company does, uh, do operate with the, um, with the right thing in mind or with the right product they should have the right product at the right time so of course uh, the time of delivery is and the quality of the product is considered or factored in no? or take into consideration ganun. so for internal business we have quality wherein we have the number to measure it we need to know how how many items or our products are defective, the number of returns of this product, the customer survey, 
the amount of scrap, amount of rework, the field service report, warranty claims, and vendor quality defects. For productivity, we have cycle time, you know, from the raw materials to the finished product. How long does it take? You know, we take uh, the labor efficiency, machine efficiency, amount of waste, amount of rework, and scrap. On flexibility, we measure the critical success factor by the setup time and the cycle time. To equipment readiness, uh, we consider the downtime, the experience of the operator, the machine capacity, and the maintenance activities. And on the safety side, uh, we measure our critical success factor by knowing the number of accidents, what are the effects uh, of these accidents. Huh? Next would be on learning and innovation. Here, we have product innovation that can be measured through the number of design changes, number of new patents or copyrights, the skills of research and development staff. For the timeliness, how many days will it take? No, from the, are there any over or under the announced ship date? For skill development, we have the number of training hours and the amount of skill performance improvement. For employee morale, we have employee turnover, the number of complaints, employee complaints, and employee survey. And finally, on competence, we have the rate of turnover, uh, training, experience, adaptability, financial and operating performance measures. And the last category we, for under critical success factors are the other factors that we're in dito pumapasok si government relations. We take into consideration the number of violations as well as are there any community service activities of the company. So now, without strategic information, the firm is likely to stray from its competitive course to make strategically wrong manufacturing and marketing decisions to choose the wrong products or the wrong customers. So, uh, we take, uh, we will enumerate here the consequences of lack of strategic information. For one, the decision making based on intuition, no? Second would be on the lack of clarity about direction and goals. the lack of clear and favorable perception of the firm by customers and suppliers. It will also lead to incorrect investment decisions, ineffective benchmarking, the inability to, you know, effectively benchmark competitors, which results in lack of knowledge about more effective competitive strategies, and failure to identify most profitable products, customers, and market. Now we know the different strategic measures of success and the consequences if we lack an idea or the strategic information, now we proceed with the competitive strategies. So, for a firm to sustain a competitive position, it must purposely or as a result of market forces arrive at one of the two competitive strategies, namely the cost leadership wherein the firm produce products or services at the lowest cost in the industry and that the company is considered as a cost leader which would eventually make sustainable profits at lower prices, thereby limiting the growth of competitions in the industry through its success in price wars and undermining the profitability of competitors which must meet the firm's low price. And the second competitive strategy is the product differentiation strategy, which creates a perception among consumers that the product or service is unique in some important way and that 
uh, here the company can charge higher prices and outperform the competition in profits without reducing costs significantly. No? So, the differentiation strategy is implemented by um, ensuring that the, there is a higher product quality and features or innovations. Most industries, including automobile, consumer electronics, and industrial equipment, have differentiated firms. The appeal of differentiation is especially strong for product lines, which the perception of quality and image is important. As, for example, we have cosmetics, jewelry, and automobiles. Looking more closely at differentiated, at differentiated firms, the key critical success factors and execution issues are in marketing and product development. While, we, while they develop customer loyalty, brand recognition, emphasizing superior and unique products, and developing and using detailed and timely information about customer needs and behavior. So this is where the marketing and product development within the firm provide leadership and the management accountants support these efforts by gathering, analyzing, and reporting the relevant information. So now we proceed with the contemporary cost management techniques. So there are 14 contemporary cost management techniques that we will that we will be discussing one by one. So managers commonly use the following tools to implement the firm's broad strategy and to facilitate the achievement of success on critical success factors. So we have one, total A, total quality management, uh, B, the just-in-time production, process re-engineering, benchmarking, mass customization, balance scorecard, activity-based costing management, the theory of constraints, life cycle costing, target costing, computer aided design and manufacturing, automation, e commerce, and the value chain. So we will be discussing this, discussing it one by one. Okay. Okay. So starting with the total quality management. So, total quality management class is a management philosophy that focuses on continuous improvement of organizational processes and systems to provide high quality products and services to customers. So, they develop policies and procedures you know, to ensure that the firm's products and services exceeds customers' expectation. In total quality management, the all members of the organization are involved from top level managers to frontline employees in a collaborative effort to achieve a culture of quality and excellence so here the core principles of the total quality management include customer focus continuous improvement employee involvement, process-centered approach, and the data-driven decision-making. So by implementing TQM principles, organizations aim to increase customer satisfaction while reducing waste and defects and improve overall efficiency and effectiveness. So it, the, this technique typically involves a structured approach to quality improvement including identifying customer needs and requirements so what do they need uh, from us what are the requirements what are the quality standards how they measure and analyze performance data and take action to improve their processes and systems so a continuous training and education of employees are critical components of TQM as they help to create a culture of quality and foster a commitment to ongoing 
improvement. So as you can see, the TQM is a formal effort to improve quality throughout an organization's value chain. And uh, the two major characteristics are on focusing on serving the customers and systematic problem solving using teams made up of frontline workers. So don't worry because we will be discussing total quality management in detail in in more detailed discussion but uh pala more detailed discussion under chapter six no only on tqm now we proceed with uh just in time production or just just in time no as just in time as a cost management technique so here uh just in time is a manufacturing philosophy and management approach that emphasizes the importance of producing goods and services at the exact time they are needed without the need for holding excess inventory or materials. So you see, just-in-time is based on the concept of minimizing waste and optimizing efficiency in production and supply chain management. So the just-in-time approach involves synchronizing production and material flow to meet demand precisely, reducing the need for stockpiling and inventory storage. So, hindi ka bibili ng bibili and then hindi mo pupuin na inyong warehouse mo class. You just need to reduce the, that need and of course to reduce yung, uh, ang tabag doon, uh, the, the carrying cost of the inventory. No? So, this can result in significant cost savings and increased efficiency for organizations. By implementing just-in-time, organizations can improve their responsiveness to customer demand, reduce lead times, and minimize waste in production processes. So, alam nyo naman, may ibang mga products na imported, no? Na kinakailangan sa operation. So, kinakailangan yung planning, i-consider yung lead time, gano katagal, bago dumating. So, the, the core principles of uh, just-in-time includes continuous improvement, have continuous improvement, process optimization, and the elimination of waste. This, this kind no, of uh, cost management technique requires a strong focus on quality control and consistent, reliable suppliers. So, dapat maganda yung relationship, no? the supplier relationship uh, it requires close collaboration also between the different departments within an organization as well as between suppliers and customers by producing goods and services on demand just in time can help organizations improve their efficiency reduce their cost and better meet the customer needs so now, what are then the, be the benefits no, of just-in-time production? So the benefits and features of just-in-time production includes, for one, bababa, no? Redu reduction of reduced inventory costs. So here, uh, we minimize the amount of inventory uh, our company holds as products are produced only when they are needed. So walang production kung walang demand, no? So, this reduces the cost of carrying inventory such as storage cost and the risk of inventory obsolescence. And also, um, if wala ka namang inventory no, of these finished goods na wala pang demand, yung risk din, yung mga theft, yung what if magkaroon ng sunog, bababa din siya kasi wala, walang mga ano eh, walang item or product eh, na naka-store, no? So, yung risk ng mga hindi natin malaman, uh, like fraud, like, yun nga, theft, no? Yung, yung, uh, sunog, yung baha. So, hindi mo na yun iisipin. Kasi in the first place, you have maintained an optimum amount of uh, minimum inventory in terms of your raw materials. And then, you just use it or gagamitin sa production kung kinakailangan lang, di ba? So, second would be an increased efficiency wherein the just-in-time production reduces waste and improves efficiency by minimizing the amount 
of work in progress and eliminating unnecessary steps in the production process. And these results in shorter lead times, uh, reduce production time, and increase through put. Next would be improved product quality, wherein just-in-time production emphasizes the importance of producing high-quality products the first time, as there is no buffer inventory to hide defects. No, so kulang yung ano mo kung magakamali ka sa isang product. My God, ano nang mga yare? Hindi enough lang talaga yung available mo na material. So uh, this leads to a focus on continuous improvement and the use of quality control tools to eliminate defects and improve processes. And also, here, um, the companies need to respond quickly to changes in demand and to produce a variety of products efficiently. So, to achieve... Uh, through the use of flexible manufacturing systems such as cellular manufacturing and cross-training of workers. Also, nagkakaroon din tayo ng cost savings if we are going to follow this kind of philosophy wherein we, by reducing our inventory cost, improving our efficiency, and minimizing waste, this can all result in lower production cost and increase profitability okay and of course uh, improve relationship with suppliers so just in time production requires close collaboration with suppliers to ensure timely delivery of materials and components hindi natin afford na hindi dumating yung product yung raw materials sa time na kinakailangan natin siya kasi nga problema tayo sa yung mga obligations din natin sa ating mga customer, no? So, there is a collaboration with our supplier and this can lead to improved relationship with suppliers and development of long-term partnership, no? So, yun. Ang just-in-time production. So, don't worry if you would want to learn more on just-in-time pr product system. This is also covered in Chapter 6, no? Same sa Total Quality Management. Now, we proceed with the next management, cost management technique. We have process re-engineering. So, re-engineering re is a process or is a business management approach that involves radically re redesigning business processes to achieve significant improvements in performance such as increase efficiency, reduce cost, improve quality, and enhance customer satisfaction. Process re-engineering involves analyzing and questioning the fundamental assumptions underlying existing processes and identifying opportunities for radical improvement. I think by now, you already have that, yung parang paulit-ulit na talaga yung increase efficiency, reduce cost, improve quality, enhance customer satisfaction. From the first two, di ba? Yun din kasi ito nga yung mga cost management techniques, no? Uh, so here, we have, um, it has been defined as the parang fundamental rethinking and radical redesign of the business processes. So, what are the objectives then? No? What are the objectives of process uh, re-engineering? So, for one, we have improving efficiency. So, in process re-engineering, we aim to improve the efficiency by eliminating unnecessary steps, automating repetitive tasks, and streamlining workflows. No? Kung meron pa ulit-ulit dyan, i-automate na yan. For the next objective, we have reduction or the reducing of cost. Reducing cost, basically. Uh, it aims to reduce cost by eliminating non-value-added activities, reducing cycle time, and minimizing waste. Next one would be on improving our product quality. So, how do we improve? By redesigning our processes to eliminate defects and errors. Marami tayong mga parang experimentation, no? Tinitingnan natin yung mga redesigning processes. 
Next one would be to enhance our customer satisfaction. Here, um, we design processes that meet or exceed customer expectations, provide faster delivery times, and of course, ensure consistent quality. Also, we increase innovation. No, one of the objectives would be the increasing increasing innovation. We're in. We encourage our employees to think creatively, no? to think outside the box about how processes can be improved and redesigned. And finally, on achieving competitive advantage by creating processes that are faster, more efficient, and more effective than those of our competitors. So overall, no? um, the objectives of process re-engineering are to create a more efficient, effective and customer focused organization that is better equipped to compete in a uh, rapidly changing business environment next papalatay tapos jan for benchmarking aside from the two we benchmarking enables organization to improve their processes by adopting best practices from other organization that would lead to increase efficiency, reduce cost, improve quality. Paulit-ulit talaga yan. Pero, yun talaga yung, yung mga parang output or parang result ng lahat ng mga cost management technique, no? And of course, with the end, with the customer satisfaction, you no, know, we would want to enhance our, uh, the customer satisfaction by adopting those best practices and by benchmarking also, it enables organization to identify best practices in innovation and, and also adopt, no, hindi lang i-identify mo yung best practices ng innovation, but also i-adopt mo din yung best practices para ma-improve yung innovation capabilities. No? Mahirap din naman, nag-benchmark ka nga, kaso nga lang, <laughs> hindi mo naman ginagamit sa in yung operation. So, parang wala lang din. Parang naghahanap ka lang ng mga notes, no? Oh, maganda yung sa kanila. Tapos, wala. Hanggang sa papel lang siya. So, hindi naman din ganon, di ba? So, today, benchmarking efforts are facilitated by cooperative networks of non-competing firms that exchange benchmarking information. Now, we proceed with next item on the list would be on mass customi customization. So, in mass customization class, it's a manufacturing approach that combines the benefits of mass production and product customization. No? So, yan. The benefits of mass production and customi customization sorry, to produce goods that are tailored to the specific needs and preferences of individual customers. Marami nang ganito ngayon. No? Mass customization allows customers to customize their products to meet their unique needs while still enjoying the efficiencies and cost savings of mass productions. I think the best example of this one would be yung mga wedding souvenirs, yung mga carpet giveaways, yung, di ba, na parang um, for planners, lalagay mo na yung company name, yung logo. Marami din kasi some of the companies meron silang 40 to 200 employees tapos silang, silang lahat bibigyan yung mga supplier, yung customer bibigyan din. So, ito, nagkakaroon ng uh, mass production and then also product customization that would really fit yung need ng company. Of course, uh, mass customization involves the use of advanced technologies and flexible man manufacturing processes to produce a wide range of products that can be customized. Meron na tayong payong, meron tayong mga mugs, tumblers, calendars, ano pa ba? Mm. Yung mga passport holder, yung even pens right now, di ba? Na, na, ano na sila? Naka-customize na sila. So, there's already a large, wide range of products, no? And that by tailor, by of course tailoring their, these products to the specific needs and preferences of our individual customers, companies can increase customer satisfaction. Talagang masisiyahan talaga yung mga customer natin, no? lalo, lalo na makikita nila yung, yung pangalan nila don, no? Dahil na yung mga panahon ng gift giving, maraming mga customized uh, goods jan. 
revenue while reducing inventory cost and of course improving efficiency. Okay, next item would be on balance scorecard. So, ano ba tong balance scorecard? Balance scorecard is an important tool for management as it provides a comprehensive view of an organization's performance across multiple dimensions. So, it translates an organization's mission and strategy into a set of performance measures that can be used to track progress and, of course, make informed decision. So, sabi nga, the, the key word there is integration, no? So, integration. So, the balance scorecard integrates performance measures in four key areas, starting off with the financial perspective. Next would be the cost, uh, sorry, the internal business or the internal operations perspective. Um, innovation and learning perspective and the customer satisfaction perspective. So, the balance scorecard is an important tool for management as it provides a framework for aligning strategy with performance, providing a comprehensive view of performance, facilitating communication and collaboration, ang rame, no? encouraging continuous improvement, and thus supports or supporting decision making. By using the balance scorecard, uh, the management can make more informed decisions and drive performance improvements across the organization. If yung TQM class and then yung just-in-time covered ng chapter 6, yung balance scorecard naman is covered under chapter 7. So, ito ay parang teaser lang, no? So, these are like fundamentals. Now, we proceed with... Activity-based costing and management. Activity-based costing and management is a method of assigning costs of products or services based on the activities that are required to produce them. Uh, compared sa traditional costing, you know, yung, pro yung product, di ba, yung parang direct materials plus direct labor plus factory overhead, total product cost, yun na yun. Assuming wala kang beginning inventory, ganun, ganun. So, Yun, di-divide mo lang yun sa so number of units. Yun na yung product or unit cost mo, no? Um, in activity-based costing class, you assign cost to products or services based on the activities that are required to produce them. So, for example, meron kang dalawang product, tapos pro we have, you have product A, product B, and then product A requires more setup time than product B. So, of course, kung siya yung mas malaki yung setup time niya, you need to allocate also a higher proportion of the setup cost to product A. No? So, um, in ABC, it involves identifying specific activities that are required to produce a product or service and then assigning the cost associated with, these act with those activities to the products or services that consume them. So, if you're going to use activity-based costing and management, now, what could be the benefits? Now, what are the benefits? So, unang-una sa lahat, you have improved accuracy. Malamang. ABC would provide more accurate picture of the true cost of products or services as it takes into account the specific activities required to produce them. So, kaya na yun yung example kanina, product A and product B, product A should be given higher allocation in terms of setup cost. Kasi nga, mat matagal-tagal din yung setup cost niya or mahaba-haba yung setup cost niya compared sa product B. Second one is uh, better cost control because ABC costing and management helps companies identify areas where cost can be reduced by focusing on the activities that consume the most resources. Yun din, nakikita na din natin dun kung um, kinakailangan ba akong magtanggal ng tao, kinakailangan ba akong maghanap ng magandang technology na pwedeng yun na yung gagamitin for mass production or yung sa assembly ba kaya, ba kaya or ano. So, makikita mo kung mawiway mo na dun, di ba? And of course, improved decision making ABC provides more accurate cost information which can help companies now make better decision about 
pricing, product mix, and of course, resource allocation. Yung resource allocation, hindi lang yung tao, no? but also the time spent uh, in performing one activity. And of course, we have enhanced competitiveness. By understanding the true cost of their products or services, companies can become more competitive by offering better value to customers. Kaya nga, meron tayo sa cost accounting, merong ABC costing doon, di ba? Mer may isang chapter na talagang nagko-compute ka lang magkano talaga, yung kina uh, magkano talaga yung cost ng product, no? So, ABC is a valuable costing method that enables companies to assign costs of their products or services based on the specific activities that are required to produce them. By providing accurate picture of the true cost of products or services, it can help companies improve cost control, decision-making, and competitiveness. At dahil tapos na po tayo sa ABC Costing and Management, now we will proceed to the theory of constraints. Ito namang theory of constraints class, it's a management philosophy that focuses on identifying and managing the constraints or bottlenecks that limit an organization's ability to achieve its goals. No, So, ito pala yun. So, naiwan yung caption. Ito yun. Focuses on identifying and managing the constraints or bottlenecks that limit an organization's ability to achieve its goals. Ano, ano din yung goal ng theory of constraints? Increase through throughput or the rate at which an organization generates revenue by identifying and managing the constraints that limit its capacity. Gusto ko lang i-emphasize yung word na and. No? Identifying and managing. Hindi pwedeng identify mo lang. Kinakailangan mo i-manage yung constraints that limit its capacity. So, the key principles, no? The goal of the organization is to make money. Ano ba naman? Profit. So, the primary goal is to make money. So, by how do we make money class? By increasing throughput while simultaneously reducing inventory and operating expenses. Okay. And uh, the second key principle is that these constraints limit an organization's ability to achieve its goals and that they need, are need, uh, they need, sorry, they need to be identified and managed. And by managing constraints, we focus on their impact on the organization rather than their specific technical characteristics. Ano na ba yung impact? May financial bank impact? May non-financial impact? And then, of course, continuous improvement. No? Essential talaga yung continuous improvement in order to achieve their goals. And thus, um, of course, requires a continuous process of identifying and managing constraints. Baka naman sa isang taon naka-identify ka na, na-manage mo na, pagka sa susunod na taon, wala na. You already stop identifying and managing the constraints. Hindi po, no? Parang uh, day in and day out, may nalilearn tayong bago. So, we need to adjust accordingly. No? When the need, uh, if, if the need arises. But best practice, talaga mas maganda if may periodic na review no? ng mga constraints at saka bottlenecks. So, uh, theory of constraints is used in the business management to what? Improve productivity, reduce cost, and as a result, increase profit. It involves, huwag kalimutan, a continuous process of identifying and managing the constraints. No? With a focus on improving throughput. Take note, uh, the theory of constraints is widely used in manufacturing, supply chain management, and project management. But, of course, it can be applied to any area of business where constraints limit an organization's ability to achieve its goals. Okay, kaya pa ba? Meron pa tayong, I think, 10 slides more. Don't worry, malapit na tayong matapos. 
So now we proceed with tadaan, life cycle costing. Life cycle costing is a method of evaluating the total cost of ownership of a product or asset over its entire life cycle. So mula sa initial purchase down the line through the disposal or retirement. So ito yung mga cost na kinoconsider. The acquisition cost, the, the cost of acquisition, acquisition cost, of, yun nga, acquisition, cost of acquisition, operation, maintenance, and finally, yung disposal cost. So what are the key principles in the life cycle costing? Yung total cost of ownership, uh, they take into consideration all of the cost associated with the product or asset over its entire life cycle. No? Mula sa pag-anak pa hanggang sa kamatayan ng item. Of course, the time value of money. Which means that cost incurred in the future are discounted to reflect their lower value compared to cost incurred in the present. And... In life cycle costing, very important talaga to. In comparing alternatives, no? Kasi nga, um, here in life cycle costing, it allows for the comparison of alternative products or assets based on their total cost of ownership over their life cycle. And, di ba, um, yun nga, baka naman bibili ka ng item, let's say for example, yung spare parts na parang tatagal lang ng 3 years, mas mas cheaper siya pero may another alternative na tatagal siya ng 5 uh, 3 years siya. May spare part na yung lifespan niya 3 years lang tapos kinakailangan pang i-maintain every year, no? Year 1, year 2, year 3, may maintenance cost ka pa diyan compared sa of course kasi 3 lang. Let's say for example, bababa, cheaper siya. Pero here comes another product, let's say tatagal siya ng 5 years, yung maintenance cost din niya is uh, if i-total mo, mas mababa compared sa yung isang item. So, i-consider mo na din yon, no? Pero, of course, maraming consideration eh. Hindi lang din yung dalawa lang. Kasi titingnan mo din, baka naman yung pagdating ng third year, magiging obsolete na kaya yung spare part na yon, Or baka meron ding bagong um, invention or bagong product line na parang, mas mataas pa yung kalidad kesa sa existing na product. No? So, ibigay na natin yan sa technical team. Sina yung mag-iisip ng ganun. No? Um, but of course, yung sa finance, on the finance side, you need to consider all the costs incurred. Uh, where do we usually use life cycle costing class? Uh, it is particularly useful in industries where assets have a long lifespan such as infrastructure, construction, and transportation. And of course, by considering the total cost of ownership of assets, companies can make more informed decisions about the most cost-effective way to manage their assets over their life cycle. And it's very important din pala, before I forget, yung sa budgeting, Diba? Kasi bibili ka ngayon, tapos, uh, baka, kailan mo ba babudgetan ulit yung parang maintenance niya, no? Every year, bababudget ka ba nun? Or, on the third year ka pa magbabudget? So, importante din yon no? Para isahan na lang din yung understanding mo na, ah, okay, pagbibiling ko to, ito yung mga budgetary requirement niya for the next three years, for the next five years, tapos after five years, kinakailangan ng ibenta, kanon so, na-incorporate mo na siya sa budget. Okay. Next stop would be on target costing. Here, target costing is a method of cost management used in product development and pricing with the goal of maximizing, yung goal, maximizing profit margin while meeting customer expectation. Baka naman nagbibenta ka dyan, tapos wala yung quality mababa, no? So, you need to meet or even, even so, exceed. Mas maganda yung exceed mo yung customer expectation. So, in target costing class, you are setting a target cost for a product or service and then working backward to determine the necessary selling price that will meet profit target. Meron palang equation dapat dito, no? Kinakala may equation dito. Sulat na lang natin. 
So, in short, yung target cost, sige, lagay na lang natin TC, kasi mahirap pala magsulat dito. TC is equivalent to market, walang insert text dito, ah. M, D, P, which stands for market determined price less the desired profit. Ayon. So, that is the formula. Target cost equals market determined price less the desired profit. So, the entity using target costing must often adopt strict cost reduction measures to meet the market price and remain profitable to meet, to meet, tama ba? Yes, this is a common strategic approach used by intensely competitive industries where even small price differences attract consumers to the lower priced product. Alam niyo naman, mahirap ng panahon ngayon, so naghahanap talaga tayo ng mas mababang presyo. Okay? So that's it for customer satisfaction, uh, customer, sorry, that is for target costing. Okay. So, ay hindi pa pala. May key principles pa pala. Ano ba? So, yung key principles na on the profit margin, it should be based on the company's financial goals in the competitive environment. Hindi po tayo nagkakaroon ng negosyo para hindi mag-earn. No? Dito charity. So, kailangan may profit. No? And, Cross-functional collaboration, wherein um, there is a cross-functional collaboration between product development, marketing, and finance teams to ensure that the product or service meets customer expectations while also meeting cost and profit targets. Kinakailangan pag-usapan talaga natin to, magkano yung product, yung unit price ng product, magkano ba yung marketing um, expenses na involved dito. So, yung finance team at saka treasury maghahanap din ng pera kung saan kukunin, saan huhugutin yung budget. No? So, target costing is used in business management to help companies design products and services that meet customer expectations while maximizing profit margins. So, by using target costing, you know, we can make informed decisions about product design, Supplier selection. Product design pa lang. Meron na maraming alternatives, di ba? Ano kaya kung itong, itong klaseng spares or ano ba? Ano, it, it, itong parang item na to, ito yung gagamitin natin. How, how about yung mga alternatives? Supplier selection, process improvements to ensure that costs are minimized while customer expectations are met. Okay. Now, we are done with target costing. Ilan na lang? Apat na lang? Kaya pa? Yes, kaya pa. So, yeah, we have computer-aided design and manufacturing. In computer-aided design, or CAD, this involves the use of computer software to create detailed 2D or 3D models of products or parts. No? These models are then used to test and refine designs before production begins no huwag kang mag-produce agad no kinakailangan i-design yan so reducing the risk of errors and improving product quality cad also allows for the creation of digital prototypes which can be used to visualize the final product and test different design options very very important yung may skill talaga for cad no um you need to visualize okay, baka naman Kasi, iba yung naiisip, may communication factor din yun eh. Baka iba yung iniisip ng, ano, yung parang proponent ng project na ito, at saka yung mag-de-design, no, ng, ng product. And, on the other hand, we have computer-aided manufacturing, or CAM, that uses, also, computer software to automate the manufacturing process. Um, the CAM software can be used to create tool paths, tool paths which guide machines such as slates, mills, and routers to manufacture products or parts. And that it can also be used to optimize the manufacturing process by minimizing material waste and maximizing efficiency. 
So this is used um, in companies that uh, can create. Wait now. Uh, commonly used in industries such as aerospace, automotive, and engineering, where precision and efficiency are critical. Yung parang isang millimeter lang, isang centimeter lang na difference. It can smell. I smell. It can smell a difference. It can. It can. It can. You know. Uh, disrupt operation, baka may masira tayong mga equipment dyan kung may mali, no? So, by using computer-aided design and management, companies can stay competitive in these industries by improving their design and manufacturing processes, reducing cost, and improving product quality. Okay. Automation na tayo. So, for automation class, Automation is the use of technology to perform tasks or processes that were previously done by humans. No? Para mawawala na tayo ng trabaho nito, class. So, automation can help businesses in a number of ways and is often used as a business strategy to improve efficiency, reduce cost, and increase productivity. No? So, what are the benefits of automation? Kanina, na-discuss, nabigay natin na example, when we automate, yun yung parang paulit-ulit na naginagawa natin. Kung pwede na paulit-ulit ng monitoring, i-automate na yan. So, the benefits include, among others, increased efficiency by reducing the, ta the amount of time it takes to complete them. So, by automating the repetitive or manual task, businesses can free up employees to focus on more complex or creative tasks that add more value to the business. No? Yung, yung sa Excel file, yung kinakalangan, may formula na doon na on time buy or late ba yung delivery ng item para malaman mo na agad-agad na, uy, ito pala, hindi pa dumarating, late na siya. So, hindi na yung magmomonitor ka pa. Kinakalangan, if possible, may, may magno-notify na sa'yo na, ah, oh, ito, kinakalangan, darating na to, o hindi, ganun. So, it increase efficiency. Second one would be on cost reduction, wherein uh, we minimize the need for manual labor and reduce the risk of errors or defects. It can also help um, businesses reduce material waste and energy consumption, leading to cost savings over time. Cost savings over time. Kasi nga naman, some of these items, yung mga automation, nangangailangan ito ng pera. No, nangangailangan ng investment, no, capital, may capital requirement siya. Pero, you need to, what, uh, you need to provide an information or show a, parang cost-benefit analysis na if we are going to capitalize on this particular asset uh, in the long run, no, meron din naman tayong benefit, financial benefit, o ika nga, no. And then, we also have uh, improved quality no, by the use of automation. Because how do we improve quality? We reduce by reducing the risk of errors or defects. No? Kung i-automate mo yan, consistent talaga yung product quality, which could lead to greater, greater customer satisfaction and loyalty. No? Before, hindi, pag-isipan nga natin, example, example, nga, example. So, before, di ba, meron yung parang sinusulat kamay, yung mga tarpaulin, mga ganun-ganun, nilalagay pa siya sa cloth, no? So, yung mga gifted individuals na mag magaling sa calligraphy or yung magaling magsulat, so, sila lang talaga yung nagkakaroon ng chance na mag-open up ng isang business na yung letter lettering, parang ganun ba yung tawag dun? So, mga lettering, mga ganun-ganun. Ngayon, through the help of printers, and then yung mga printers natin, plus, di ba, Malalaki na yung mga printers, colored na siya, maraming font na, meron na ngang cricut, mga ganun, cricut ba yun or cricut? Meron nang mga ganun. So, consistent na yung mga uh, product output ng mga product, no? So, mas madali at mas consistent yung mga product through automation. Increase productivity. Ito naman kasi automation na nga. Wala na, hindi, hindi, hindi na, ano, walang, walang human factor na, ah, ayoko na, bukas na ulit kasi pagod na ako. Walang ganun. So, in automation, it can help businesses increase productivity by enabling them to produce more products or complete more tasks in less time. 
So these can help businesses meet customer demand more quickly and efficiently, leading to increased revenue and profitability. No? But of course, take into consider, wag mo namang patayin yung, yung equipment mo. Kailangan may maximum capacity na pwede, you know, oy, par, uh, yung titignan mo din, yung ilan bang unit yung mapuproduce niya in time. No? Hindi naman pwede mo na 24-7 yung equipment mo, baka naman hindi yan tatagal ng limang taon. So, isip-isip din tayo kung hanggang ka, saan yung maximum niya, no? Yung capacity niya. Magbigay din tayo ng time for the equipment to uh, recover. Ay, ipagpahingahin din naman natin. Ayaw din naman natin mag-overheat yung item natin, di ba? Or yung equipment natin. And of course, uh, competitive advantage. Automation can help businesses gain a competitive advantage by enabling them to produce products or deliver services more quickly and efficiently than their competitors. So, this can help businesses with new customers retain existing customers and increase market share. Diba? So, by implementing automation technologies, businesses can stay competitive and profitable in a rapidly changing business landscape. No? Maganda yung automation. Maganda. Maganda yung strategy siya. Okay? So, hopefully by now, you already have an idea of the strategy that you would want to Im Im employ about, or use or utilize in your business if you do have one right now. Okay? And then now, second to the last. Eto na. Second to the last na. Konti, konti na lang. So, e-commerce. No? So, e-commerce or electronic commerce refers to the buying and selling of goods and services over the internet. Uh, it's a highly effective business strategy for companies of all sizes offering a number of benefits that can help drive growth and profitability. And of course, you don't really need a website for that. May ibang e-commerce site, di ba? Yung sa Facebook, mayroon na nga affiliate marketing. Marami na, marami na. Marami na tayo pa yung naiiwan, nag-aaral pa tayo nito. But uh, it's already available. At of course, e-commerce allows you, your business, to reach a much larger audience than traditional brick-and-mortar stores as customers can access their online store from anywhere in the world. Before, parang location, location, location. Ngayon, if you are yung, pa, uh, yung apparel items, no? Or mga goods like coffee, uh, personalized items, pwede nang wala kang physical store for as long as maganda yung uh, social media may so social media presence no social media presence um through e-commerce can be more cost effective than traditional retail as it eliminates the need for physical storefronts reducing overhead costs such as rent expense utilities and staffing and e-commerce also allows businesses to automate certain tasks reducing the need for manual labor Diba kung may physical store ka, magbabayad ka ng rental, which is fixed, no? Kahit wala kang kita, magbabayad ka nun. Yung utilities, of course, it would depend on what kind of store are you putting up. If ikaw naman eh, yung may uh, coffee shop, kinakalangan, ay yung iba ngayon na mga coffee shop, diba, uh, air condition na na room, tapos what if malaki pa yung area, so kung malaki yung area, mas mataas pa yung kap ng capacity ng aircon yung kinakailangan mo, and of course, yung staffing requirement nga. Um, improve customer experience. Uh, in e-commerce, you allow business or the businesses offer more personalized and convenient shopping experience for customers. Uh, scroll, scroll ka lang. You can easily browse products, compare prices, and make purchases from the comfort of your own homes. Diba yung... Uh, if you would want to buy a new cellphone in Globe, kaya is smart. Kaya kaya nilalagay na silang different plans. Tapos, if ito, compare this product to, di ba, may ganun na siya. So, of course, uh, e-commerce can also help businesses increase, increase sales and revenue by offering customers a more convenient and accessible way to make purchases. And, maganda din yung e-commerce kasi natatrack na yung customer data and behavior which can help target uh, marketing efforts more effectively and increase 
seat. Naka-embed na, uh, parang ano na siya, embedded na siya within the system na nakukuha niya, niya o naggagawa na siya ng summary ng yung parang customer demographics, ilan sa kanila yung babae, ilan yung lalaki, ilang taon yung nasa age bracket na ganito, ganyan, ganito, ganyan. Tapos if um may data pa if saan location, Philippines ba or outside of country, ba marami nang ganon. So maganda yun din yung e-commerce class. So, e-commerce can be a highly effective business strategy for companies looking to expand their reach, reduce costs, improve the customer experience, increase sales and revenue, and gain a competitive advantage in their market. However, it is important for businesses, of course, to carefully plan and execute their e-commerce strategy, taking into account factors such as yung website design, kung malaki ka na, website design, payment processing, di ba, meron bang um, payment method, shipping, logistics, and of course, customer service. Okay, so that's it for value chain. And finally, before we will have our classroom activity, we have the value chain. No, value chain, value chain. Value chain refers to a concept, uh, it's a concept, value chain is a concept that was introduced by Michael Porter, a renowned business strategist. Uh, the value chain refers to the series of activities that a company performs to create and deliver a product or service to the market. So, there are two main categories, the primary activities and the secondary activities or the support activities. So, primary activities are directly involved, yung direct cost in the creation of, uh, in the creation and delivery of the product or service while support or secondary service activities, sorry, provide infrastructure and resources needed for the primary activities to take place. So, what are the examples of primary activities? So, under primary activities, we have inbound logistics, which uh, were activities relating to receiving, storing, and distributing inputs to the production process. Operations, wherein uh, these activities rela are related to transforming inputs into finished products or services. Outbound logistics, um, activities that are related to storing and distributing finished products or services to cons customers. Marketing and sales, activities related to promoting and selling the products or services. And service activities uh, related to providing customer support and maintaining the product or service after it has been sold, no? after sales. No? So, now we proceed with the sec secondary or support activities. The first item on the list would be on procurement. So, these are activities are related to purchasing the inputs needed for the production process. Technology development. Activities related to R&D. So, research and development and innovation. Human resource management. Activities related to recruiting, training, and managing employees. Infrastructure. Activities related to the overall management and support of the company, such as finance, legal, and administration. Okay. So, yun. Yun yung primary, yung secondary, or support activities. So, the value chain can be used as a business strategy by companies to identify areas where they can add value and differentiate themselves from their competitors, no? By working together to optimize the... So, here, yung sa value chain, uh, you can identify areas where you can collaborate with your suppliers, customers, or other partners to create shared value. And by working together, um, companies can create a more sustainable and efficient supply chain and improve the overall value proposition for customers. So, that's the last item for the contemporary cost management techniques. Now, we will need to know if you have questions. Anyone? So, we will just pause the video for a while if you have questions and then we will proceed with the classroom activity. No? Sige. So, for classroom activity, you have uh, here, 
I want you to group yourselves, no? Ilan kayo? Around 30 something. So, can we have 11, 11 team members, no? So, we have this classroom activity. So, Maokini Corp is a mid-sized company that manufactures and sells a line of rattan furniture products. By the way, yung gusto lang natin na out objective nito is malaman natin kung alam nyo ba yung how to combine the different competitive strategies that you have learned and we have discussed earlier. Okay? So, the company has been in the business for 30 years and has built a strong reputation for quality and reliability. However, in recent years, the company has been facing increasing competition from low-cost imports from overseas, which has put pressure on its profit margins. Now, the management committee has decided to engage your consultancy services to explore different competitive strategies to regain its competitive advantage in the market. So, prepare a management report. So, if example ito, in-engage yung consultancy services, Di ba, sa strategic cost, pwede mo naman i-outsource just in case wala ka talagang uh, specific department na, nag may, na may cost management, no? So, uh, pero 30 years na, wala pa rin. Baka naman gusto nilang makahanap ng iba pang side, no? ibang perspective. O, di ba? Why not? So, you are to prepare a management report. Okay, so in the preparation of the management report, bear in mind na kinakailangan Ano bang kinakailangan ng management report? Gawa kayo ng outline. Okay, gawa tayo ng outline. So, what are the items you need to discuss? Um, give a little bit. Ito naman, may profile na siya. 30 years in business, mid-size, rattan, uh, furniture products. And then, what are the competitive strategies? So, 14, yung contemporary cost management techniques and strategies that we have discussed. So, at least tatlo or apat na magagamit natin for Maokini Corp. Okay? So, we will do a class presentation after. Sige. That would be all for this video, but we are going to discuss it at our uh, Google class. No, We will still continue our discussion, but this would be the end of the presentation. Thank you and good evening.